Hello. In this video, we're going to be working with the JMS adapter in SOA Suite. I have a composite application here where I invoke a Bepl process, and that goes out, grabs some data from the database, and then uh, we have a very simple transform, and then we send that out to uh, the JMS messaging through the data, uh, JMS adapter. And um, that is on the server. Let's go over to our deployments here. And uh, you can see that I've got the JMS adapter here. It's active configuration. And uh, we've got it configured for uh, the EIS SSF SOA queue. Um, so, it's a very simple process, but it does a good demonstration of what we're going to be doing here. And um, you'll see that I also have a JMS consumption Bepl project. That is uh, currently down. I want it down because I want to first send a message and then have it read after I review the details in the um, JMS queue. One thing to also note is, is that uh, when the uh, consumption Bepl process, and I will show it to you right now actually, is on the same server or in the same domain, I suppose you should say, as the um, composite that it's, uh, or as the uh, queue that it's sending to, it will automatically run. Here it is. And you can just see that I have a get JMS. It's going out and uh, connecting to the WLS SOA uh, with this uh, queue, and this is the um, Jindy name for the JMS adapter. And then all it's doing is writing it to a file. I also have, um, just for uh, fun, I created the very similar uh, composite using a mediator, doing the same thing, getting the data, uh, same exact process of going out to the um, queue and grabbing the data, transforming it, and then writing it to a file. But the main thing that we're concerned with now is just sending out there. And you'll note that um, when I do this, I actually only grab one data, one piece of, um, one record, I should say, and then I transform it. The uh, transform does have a uh, for each in there, which allows you to um, grab more than one record and is probably a best practice when setting these up just because you never know. In the beginning, they might want record and then later on they might want 20 records. So um, this is um, a little bit better to use a transform with the for each, which allows it to po process all of them. So what we're going to do here is, is we're just going to test the JMS production. I've already uh, Put it out there and you can see that i've tested it before so you're going to run pretty quickly and um, we can see that it did the two with no errors the uh, invoked data payload is that which is steve king's data and um, take a quick look at that now we're going to go out to the JMS adapter, so a queue, I should say. Um, and sorry, I think I jumped on the wrong thing. SSF so a queue monitoring. And there's a message there. And if we take a look at it, you can see that it has the same exact information here as before. And um, it's interesting to look at some of the values. It hasn't been re-delivered re yet. Um, the delivery mode is persistent, which is what we would want for JMS. I don't have any um, expiration on it. So um, now uh, when we go back to um, JMS and we start this up, um, it will read it very quickly. 
as long as we can get it up all right. Let's see if that message is gone yet. I'm going to go back out to the module, just uh, re-enter it. I know you can use some of these shortcuts up here, but sometimes it's just easier to go out to the very end. Monitoring. Hey, look, it's gone. Okay, and now actually if we go back here, uh, we saw that there were two before, and now I expect there to be three. No, I don't see it. Um, this is August 22. It is August 22, so I guess it did run. And it is around 926, so um, I'm satisfied. Um, here, the proof is in the pudding. Can't quite see it, my clock here. I opened up my clock, but at any rate, um, it did run. And you can then see that um, we have the Bethel process running. And the interesting thing about it is, is that it really looks as though it's all part of the same message or same activity flow as the original one. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, And if we go out and we look at our temp directory, we can see that uh, at 9.26, the file was written. And that's all that it did. Um, just took some data and um, gave it a status. So that is uh, how to both send a file to a uh, JMS adapter on a domain. And in the same, same domain, reading the queue, um, have a file also run, or I'm sorry, a project also run that will read that. Now, um, one of the things that I should note that I built both a Bepl and a mediator, and um, obviously we only want to have one of them out there, because uh, if both of them ran, only one of them, they'd fight over the, the uh, message, and most likely only one of them would get it. But um, just for the sake of looking and seeing how each one works, I created uh, both a mediator and a Bepl. Now, uh, I don't know how often one would actually uh, send a JMS message to a file or to a domain that is on the same domain as the reading or the listening JMS message. So in most cases, I would think that you would send it to a foreign or remote server. And um, if, for example, one of these uh, consumer uh, projects was on the remote server, it would not automatically start up. The fact that it's on the same uh, domain as the current web logic, and uh, it actually starts up automatically. So uh, in that situation, when you're sending to a remote server, uh, but you're going to want it to automatically kick off, you would actually uh, want to um, configure that with OSB. Now, I also have read that you can configure the con connection factory to um, connect to a remote uh, WebLogic server, um, but that requires some specific configurations within WebLogic um, that I did not want to do. And OSB is a, probably a far better way of doing it anyways. Now, um, I also have written here um, the same thing, a message publisher that goes out and sends a message um, very similar to the style and text. Um, this goes out to the same queue. Why don't we run it? And um, you can see that the message has been sent and uh, if we go out and take a look at the uh, Bethel process let's see if we can't refresh that okay now we see another Bethel process there uh, this one is um, very similar in regards to the fact that it um, read it however this was uh, not generated by um, uh, it was not generated by 
originally generated by SOA. It was originally generated by uh, my Java program. Now I did run into an interesting bug. Um, I actually had set up a different WebLogic server um, and the um, program never got out of, and we're going to shut this down, never got out of um, the message queue for some odd reason. Um, and it would stick, it would run over here to the pending messages and then it would come back and I could never get it out. I never figured out why uh, it was just con consistent to that one particular WebLogic server. Um, be interesting to see if I can figure that out. Okay, well, I think that uh, does it for the evening. I hope you uh, found this helpful. Have a good day.